Good morning to all of you. First, I want to thank you for your welcome support and your friendly uh, um, welcome here at St. John the Baptist Parish since I've been uh, here in July, uh, taking over for uh, Father Augustine as pastor here in the parish. Your support, your prayers, your friendly advices have been very helpful to me, and I want to say a deep thank you to all of you um, and for your support throughout this time. Today I'm here to talk to you about the 2022 Diocesan Pastoral Services Appeal. Uh, it's also known as the PSA in our diocese here in Orange. Uh, as many of you know, each year the diocese asks each parish to donate toward the Pastoral Services Appeal to support diocesan efforts in the, the diocesan seminary formation, the Catholic education program, the Catholic charities outreach to uh, families in need, and to evangelization throughout the diocese. Each parish is assigned an assessment goal, and once donations meet this assessment goal, the parish receives anything above and beyond in, uh, back in the form of a rebate. Last year, your generosity not only met our assessment, but also resulted in a rebate of $67,480. That amount was used to support our new family, youth, and, uh, um, and young family ministry here, to improve the sound system here in the church, and also, as you probably noticed, to reseal and restripe the parking lot uh, over the summer months. Thank you to all of you who have donated this past year and have already made your donation or pledge for this year. Our assessment for this year into 2022, which Father Augustine have spoken to you earlier about, is for $106,000. I'm hoping that we can once again meet this assessment goal and also learn, uh, earn a rebate, which we will use to improve things that are needed here. And the first goal in my mind to replace and to improve is our air conditioning system. The air conditioning system was put in my first time around uh, as an associate here when we renovated this whole church. Uh, that, that, pro, uh, that system was put in um, about 18 years ago. So as you can probably sense this past summer, the air conditioning system has become very tired. And it needs to be retired. Um, partly because it's using a Freon gas that's no longer available to us. And so it makes it very difficult when it maintenance uh, requires to have it worked on. So this coming year, I hope to have the new air conditioning system in place. And your general support uh, for, uh, for this will be going toward uh, that project. Um, we, of course, uh, encourage you to, uh, if you haven't had a chance to make your donation, your pledge, uh, please consider doing so. The, it's very easy to do. The envelopes are available to you in the pews. And also, you can get on our website at sjboc.org, and there's a, a link there you can make your donation. Um, we're grateful to your uh, ongoing and generous support uh, to our parish here. Um, and I would certainly appreciate also all your prayer for support. And speaking of prayers, we are beginning the Advent season, and I would like to add to your a recommendation to your uh, Advent preparation time uh, these next four full weeks of Advent. This is the one of the few times that we have the full four weeks of Advent. Christmas is on Sunday this year. You can't move it any later uh, in the week. So it's four full weeks of Advent. I would let, recommend to you this, if you could pledge to make at least half an hour, if not a full hour, of Eucharistic adoration per week as part of your spiritual preparation for the coming birth of Christ. I'm encouraging my staff, I'm encouraging our volunteers here as well in an email I sent out to them, encouraging everybody in the parish, including staff, volunteers, everybody, that we do this together. We support each other and we come to church the church is open until 9 o'clock at night, so you can come any time throughout the day. And if you choose to make uh, your adoration at a more peaceful time at night, you can get the code to our Eucharistic Chapel, which is right behind me uh, there. It's open 24 hours a day. Uh, you can get the code there if you prefer to make your adoration time at night. Uh, please be uh, take that uh, recommendation seriously. That's a, that's a recommendation for our Advent preparation this year. 
There's also a, a giving tree in the back vestibule there. Uh, it's a tree that is set up by the Knights of Malta. The Knights of Malta sponsor a, holy, uh, a hospital called Holy Family Hospital in Bethlehem. It's a ministry that we have done for over a number of years here. Last year, your generosity have supported toward the children of that Bethlehem Hospital uh, nearly $3,000 of support. So it's very easy to do if you walk on your, on your, at the end of Mass, you walk by the, the giving tree and you see a picture of the baby you would like to support, pick up one. All the instructions and the envelopes and everything, the Knights have already uh, stapled it all together very simply, very, very compact, and you can take with you for your prayerful consideration. We'll keep that tree there for the next couple of weeks uh, so you have a chance uh, to pick up one of those things. We're very happy with the increased attendance of our weekend masses here at St. John the Baptist. We've done an October count, and we've seen, we, we're very happy to see there's an increase in the number of parishioners coming to mass on a regular basis here at St. John the Baptist. Visitors are always welcome here, of course. If you intend to attend mass here regularly, please consider being a registered parishioner at the parish. Registration is very simple. There are forms right there in the vestibule, but also you can uh, register online, uh, like I mentioned at sjboc.org. It's good to be a Roman Catholic. It's not good to be a roaming, unregistered Catholic. So uh, please consider registration, and uh, thank you for your support. We have the Knights of Columbus right outside. If you order Christmas and Advent wreaths, they have those available. They also have some extras available if you didn't get a chance to order. They also have other Christmas things like Christmas cards and, and auto magnets and things like that for you uh, that you can pick up from them. There's also a gentleman here offering uh, a nine-day preparation of Advent toward Christmas. It's, uh, he's offering it for free. It's, uh, it's one per family if you wish to come by and, and pick one up. Uh, he's offering that to you and your family. Please pick up a parish bulletin or check the website for upcoming uh, updates, especially updates for the Christmas uh, mass schedules, uh, for the Advent confession times, our last confessions before the, uh, before the, the heavy holidays uh, of, of Christmas a vigil and Christmas mass. Uh, check that uh, for the times that you can come and take advantage of the sacrament of reconciliation. Um, Okay. The mass intention will be offered today for the reposed, I'm sorry, for the Blankfield family. Now we will pray the uh, St. Michael's prayer together. St. Michael, the archangel, defend us in battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the heavenly host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and the all the evil spirits, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Have a blessed Advent season.
Asperges me. O sende nobis Domine misericordiam tuam. Domine exaudi orationem meam. Dominus vobiscum. Exaudinus Domine Sancte Pater Omnipotens Eterne Deus, et mitre digneri Sanctum Angelum Tum de Celis, qui custodiat foviat protegat, visiterat quod defendat omnes habitantes in hoc habitaculo, per Christum Dominum Nostrum.
Dominus Vobiscum. Oremus, exita quesimus Domine potentiam tuum et veni, ut ab imminentibus peccatorum nostrorum periculis, temeriam ut protegente eripi, te liberante salvari, qui vivis et regnas cum Deo Patre, un unitate Spiritus Sancti Deus, per omnia secula seculorum. Lexio pis libiate Pauli Apostoli Adomanos Fratres, scientes quia ora es jam nos de som nos urgere nun canim propior es nostra salus Quam quam crediremos, nunc nos processit, dies autem apropin covid, abdiciamus, ergo opera tenebrarum, et indu amor arma logis, sicut in die oneste ambulemus, Non in commissionibus et ebrecio titibus, non in cubilibus et impudicitis, non in cotensione et emulacione, sed in duimini nomino Iesum Christo. Dominus Vobisco. Sequentia Sancti Evangelii Secundum Lucam. In illo tempore dixit Iesus discipulis suis, erunt signa in sole et luna et stelis, er in teris presura gentium preconfusione, sonitus maris et fluctuo. 
a recentibus hominibus pretimore et expectatione, que supervenient universo orbi, nam virtutes celorum movebuntur, et tunc videbunt filium hominis venientem in nube, cum potestate magna et maestate. His autem fieri incipientibus, Respicite et levate capita vestra, quoniam apropinquat redemptio vestra. Et dixit illis similitudinem, videte ficulniam et omnes arbores, cum producunt iam exe fructum, scitis quoniam propest estas. Ita et vos cum fideritis hec fieri, Si tote quoniam propes regnum Dei. Amen dico vobis, quia non preteribint generatio hec donec omnia fiant. Celum et terra transibunt, verba autem mea non transibunt. It is rather interesting the way our Lord talks about signs in Scripture. On the one hand, he says that it is an evil generation that seeks a sign. People who need signs to prove God's existence or to verify the truth of his word are only exhibiting their unbelief. If you insist upon a sign or some special experience, if God must jump through your hopes before you will trust or follow him, that only reveals an absence of faith. For faith is believing without seeing, knowing that you have a trustworthy source who is speaking to you. And on the other hand, to those who believed and did not ask for signs, our Lord actually gave signs. Not only did he perform many miracles, signs that he proved, signs that prove he truly was the Messiah, but he also gave us signs of his second coming and the end of this world. In today's gospel, our Lord speaks about signs in creation, in the sun, the moon, the stars, and even climate and weather-related signs. After mentioning the fig tree and all the trees budding, our Lord speaks of the sea and the waves roaring, nations in distress, and people in perplexity as the powers of creation are shaken. In other words, nature itself will give us signs that the return of Christ is imminent. The problem is that unbelief misreads the signs. This happens all the time. People see the signs in creation, as in earthquakes, changes in climate and weather, floods, fires, storms, and droughts. And instead of reading these things as a call to repentance and to faithful watching for the Lord of creation to return, they see it as a call to preach the gospel of climate change and to worship creation itself as their Lord. So the signs do not help them. The world misreads the signs, and so they have the wrong diagnosis of the situation. They know that there is a problem, 
that things are not right. Even non-believers sense that things are messed up in this world and need to be fixed. But they misidentify the enemy and the source of the problem. Virtually every political cause that is out there does this. For environmentalists, the enemy is fossil fuels and overpopulation. For feminists, it is men and the patriarchy. For socialists, it is capitalism and vice versa. For conservatives, it is the progressives and vice versa. For those feeling oppressed, it is racial privilege or gender conformity or big corporations or the big government. And the list goes on. We have this intrinsic spiritual need to set up a system of good and evil that explains why reality is the way it is. But when we do this apart from God's word, we end up with a system that comprises of half-truths at best, and we end up embracing delusions and lies. Scripture tells us that the real issue, the real enemies, are the devil, the unbelieving world, and our own sinful nature. But we do not like this diagnosis because it means that the problem is not some external system or group of people that we can blame, but instead a deeper spiritual matter that involves a sickness within every one of us. Our Lord commented on how we misread or do not properly understand the signs of times. He said, when you see a cloud rising in the west, you say at once, a shower is coming. And so it happens. And when you see the south wind blowing, you say, there will be scorching heat. And so it happens. You hypocrites, you know how to interpret the appearance of earth and sky. But why do you not know how to interpret the present time? We Christians know that when creation seems to be coming apart, that is because it is a fallen creation, in bondage to decay under the curse of sin. We should not be surprised by the upheavals of creation, because we know that this is creation passing away. Creation is wearing down and wearing out, just as our human bodies. When we see the signs of the end, our reaction as Christians should be different from the unbelieving world. To the faithless, these signs bring pessimism and panic. And our Lord said that men's hearts will fail them because of fear. There will be a sense of retreat that things are spiraling downward. And our pop culture reflects this with the incredible number of movies and shows that focus on a dystopian future world after some apocalypse occurs because of disease or war or climate catastrophe. Creating these scenarios is mo almost like a therapy to deal with the dread of what is coming. But our reaction as believers is quite different, for these signs point to the return of our Savior. Whereas the world is weighed down with anxiety as things come apart, our Lord tells us to look up and lift our heads because our redemption draws near. 
so we can have peace even in the midst of these chaotic events. These signs are actually good news in that they point us to him. This is how we should think of the last day, not as a doomsday, not only as judgment day, but as redemption day, for that is what it is. It is a good day that is coming. Yes, the great and the dreadful day of the Lord, as the prophet Malachi puts it. Dreadful for those who did not strive to live in the grace of Christ, but great for those who are in the grace of Christ. And the most valuable of all signs to which we should look at and adore is the sacrament of the altar. To the unbeliever, the sacred host bears no importance. But to us who believe, the sacred host is a marvelous sign. For it assures us, as often as we received it, of our Lord's pledge to us of his eternal life. Credo in unum Deum.
Dominus Vobiscum, et Spiritu Oremus. Per omnia secula seculorum. Amen. Dominus vobiscum. Et cum spiritu tuum. Sursum 
corta. Gratia sagamus, Domino Deo nostro. Peregrinum et justum et secum et salutare, nos sibi semper urbique gratia sagere, Domine Sancte Pater Omnipotens, Eterne Deus, per Christum Dominum nostrum, quem perdito hominum, generi salvatore misericos, et fidelis promissisi, cuius veritas instrueret in scios, sanctitas justificaret impios, virtus adiuvar, adiuvaret in firmos. Tum ergo propies, ut veniat quem misurus es, et dies a fulget liberationis nostre, in hac promissionum tuarum fide, bis gaudis exultamus. Et ideo cum angelis et archangelis, cum tronis et dominationibus, cumque omni militia celestis exercitus, hymnum gloriae tu ecanimus, sine fine dicentes.
No, be squawk with Pecatori Boos. Per omnia secula seculorum. Amen. Oremus, receptis salutaribus moniti, et divina institutione formati, audemus dicere, Pater noster qui es in celis, Sanctifice tuur nomen tuum, adveniat renium tuum, fiat voluntas tua, sicud in cello et in terra. Panem nostrum quotidianum da nobis odie, et dimite nobis de vita nostra, sicud et nos dimitimus de vitoribus nostris, et ne nos inducas in tentationem. Per omnia secula seculorum. Amen. Pax domini sit semper voviscum. Sitting in the Sister Gantis Vestries for the Corpus of Vitam Eternum, in conjunction with Salutinum, the Prince. 
Echianus de exequitolit peccata mundi. Domine non sum dignus et interest of tactum meum, se tantum dic verbo et senabitur anima mea. Domine non sum dignus et interest of tactum meum, se tantum dic verbo et senabitur anima mea. Domine non sum dignus et interest of tactum meum, se tantum dic verbo et senabitur anima mea.
Dominus Vobiscum, Oremus, Suscipiamus Domine Misericordiam Tum in Mendio Templi Tui, Ut Preparationis Nose Ventura Solemnia, Congruis Honoribus Precetamus, Per Dominum Nostrum Iesum Christum Filium Tuum, Qui tecum vivere et regnat unitate Spiritus Sancti Deus, per omnia secula seculorum. Amen. Dominus Vobiscum. Et cum Spiritus Ite misa est. Benedicat vos omnipotens Deus, Pater et Filius et Spiritus Sanctus. Amen. 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 Amen.